Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhat. In this session, we're going to look at activity-based costing and we're going to look at an example. Now, it's very helpful. Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhat. In this session, we'll look at ABC, activity-based costing, and specifically, I will work an example. Now, it's very helpful if you do view the activity-based costing explanation, although in this session, I will go over the theory as I'm working the example, but it's very important that you, you understand the theory, all the idea behind activity-based costing. So to illustrate the point, the best way is to work an actual example. Now in this example, I'm going to go through ABC. Then once I'm done with ABC, at the end, I'm going to show you versus the traditional method. So I'm going to show you what would be the effect if we use the traditional method, and you will see the difference between the two. But for now, just focus with ABC. So this, we have the income statement for this company called Baxter Battery. They have a million, uh, 50 million in sales, direct labor of 15 million, I'm sorry, direct labor of 12 million, direct material of 15 million, manufacturing overhead of 14 million, um, total of 41 million, cost, uh, cost of goods sold, gross margin is 5 million minus 41 and they have selling an administrative expensive 3 million selling two marketing and 6 million general and administrative a total net operating loss of 2 million so this is their external financial statement or their financial statement using gap which is that they use for the external purposes at baxter battery here's what we did the abc team selected the following activity cost pool measure so what we did is we sent people to to uh, to uh, to observe to observe our product and by the way we produce just kind of you need to know this the company makes two type of automobile batteries so they produce automobile batteries one is the sure start it, which is a standard and one is a long life it's a deluxe so they use basically they have a, a regular battery and a deluxe one and usually abc is a good way to illustrate when you have two type of product one is regular and one is deluxe so let's take a look at what the ABC team collected from the facilities, from the company's uh, facilities. What they find out is the following activity consume resources. One, customer orders. Two, design changes. Three, order size, customer relations. And there was some cost they could not assign to anything, so they called it other. So let's look at the customer orders, design changes, and order sizes, and how did they define them. Customer orders. So what they did, assign all cost of resources that are consumed by taking and processing customer orders. So, so how much resources do we consume when we take a customer order? So that's one activity we believe it's consuming resources. Design changes. Assign all cost of resources consumed by customer request design changes. So every time a customer requests a design change, how much money do we have to, how much resources do we have to consume to comply with that design change? Order size, assign all cost of resources consumed as a, as a consequence of the number of unit produced. And here, the more unit we produce, the bigger is the order size, the more resources we consume. And hopefully this makes sense. Customer relations, assign all costs associated with maintaining a relationship with the customer. So we need to, stay in touch with the customer, make sure the customer is happy, uh, serve the customer, so on and so forth, how much it's costing us to do so, and anything else that we could not fit in those four categories, we fit under other. Assign all organization, sustaining costs, and unused capacity costs. So anything that we could not fit into the other four clearly, uh, clearly defined uh, activities. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to assign cost to cost pool using the first stage allocation. So let's go ahead and do so. So first we have to determine how much is our overhead cost. So this is our overhead cost. And remember, for activity-based costing for ABC, we include both manufacturing and non-manufacturing overhead cost. So it doesn't matter if it's manufacturing or man non-manufacturing, as long, as long as we can relate it to the product, we're gonna include it. So here's what's gonna happen. For the uh, manufacturing and non-manufacturing, we have a total of 22 million. So notice we have a total of 22 million right here. Let's break them down. We have indirect factory wages of 6 million, factory equipment 3.5, Factory factory utilities 2.5, factory building leases 2 million, those are production, which is end up to, to be 14 million. Uh, administrative cost, uh, 4 million. Uh, office equipment depreciation, 9. Administrative building lease is 1.1 million. Hold on a second. Aren't these considered basically period cost? 
Yes, they are. But for ABC, we're going to try to allocate them to the cost itself, to the product itself. Marketing, we have marketing 1.5 and selling half a million. So those are all overhead costs. So what happened to direct material and direct labor and shipping? Guess what? Those are traced directly to the product. Therefore, we don't allocate them. Okay, so notice here we have 22 million of costs that we're, we are going to allocate. Now, this 22 million, once again, it includes both. I know I'm repeating myself, but there's a reason because it's something you're not familiar with. It includes both manufacturing and non manufacturing costs. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go out to the plant facility and study what we do. Study what we do. Okay, so let's take a look at an example. Uh, we had let's take a look at the example of indirect factory wages we have six million of indirect factory wages and what are indirect factory wages factories to supervisors people who are not working directly on the product so how do they spend their time how do they spend their activities when they uh, when they work for us here's what we can here's what we here's what we find out our indirect factory wages those people that are working on the product but not directly they spend 30 percent of their time on customer orders they spend, wow, a substantial amount of their time figuring out the design change. Depending on how big is the si is order size, but it seems they spend 20% of their time on the order size. They spend 10%, they still deal with customers, and 10% we cannot define. Okay, so this is how we are going to allocate their, their $6 million. Okay, factory equipment depreciation. On the customer orders, we, we think 20%. Is consumed on customer orders. We can allocate 20% of it, 10% of the design, little bit. Maybe we need to make some minor changes for the factory when we change the design. 60% is the order size, and this should make sense. The bigger the order size, the more we use the equipment. Notice here, and hopefully now this is starting to make sense to you. 0% of the factory equipment. 0% of the factory equipment is allocated to customer relations, right? Factory equipment don't deal with the customer in any way, shape, or form. So notice what we did is we said this is 0%. And hopefully this make it this is making sense to you. 10% is other. We could not allocate. Note notice factory utilities, 0% to customer orders. 10% to design changes. It means if there's design changes, we may have to consume more electricity. 60% of factory factory utilities is allocated to the order size. And 30%, which is we don't know, we could not really pinpoint it. So notice factory utilities, it's very hard to, it's mostly order size. Okay, mostly order size. And you could see the rest, how they figure it out. Um, for example, here, um, administrative building lease, they just they said 100% others. Just to kind of show you some big ones. Um, selling expense, notice selling expense here. 70% of the selling expense is for customer relationship. And hopefully this makes sense. That's where you spend your money, that's what you spend your time and 20% of customer orders. So notice selling expenses, when do we incur selling expenses? When we take orders and when we, mean, when we maintain the relationship with the customer. So hopefully you understand how we're coming up with these percentages. Be careful. The, this is not a science, this is at best an art, okay? So how do we figure out those percentages? We talk to those people, we observe what people are doing. We'll try to measure the activity of our facilities to determine how much they are consuming in relationship to the orders. Now what we do is we'll start to allocate the money. Remember we allocated 6 million to the indirect wages and we said 30% of that is consumed by factory, by customer orders, therefore what we do as we take 6 million, multiply by 30%, we say of the 6 million, 1.8 is allocated to the factory order, to this cost pool. Then we said we have 3.5 million in equipment depreciation, and we said 20% of it is consumed by customer orders, which is we'll take 3.5 million times 20%. And what we did now is we took the 6 million and we allocated it to the various activities. We took the 3.5 million in factory equipment depreciation and we allocated it to the various activities. Notice we did not give anything to customer relation. And we did the same thing. We did the same thing for factory leases. We did the same thing for selling. And remember we said the selling is, is, is mostly customer relation and customer orders, right? It makes sense. Hopefully it makes sense. So what we did is we took the dollar amount, the cost pools, and we 
put in each cost pool how much dollar amount should go there. For example, customer order pool is 4,550,000, design changes 3,040,000, order size 5.2 million, customer relation 3.5 million, and 6.1 six million one hundred and sixty it's like for other it's doesn't really it's, there is no clear-cut uh, way to do to do so notice the total of this is where the 22 million comes into place again but notice of the 22 million six million is not really allocated to anything specifically and six million is a lot in relationship to 22 million that's a substantial amount more than 25 percent which is that's fine that's fine we can live with that, but we're still going to be more accurate than direct labor. Now, the next thing is we're going to do, we're going to compute an activity rate for cost pool. Now, we know, we know our cost pool. Let's see what the activities are. We're going to have 10,000 customer orders, 4,000 design changes, 80,000 machine hours, and 2,000 customers are served. Now, how did we get this? We know, we know based on the activities that we do on a yearly basis. So, this is, those are the, uh, the activities, okay? We have 10,000 customer orders. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to compute the activity rate. Remember, we allocated 4,520 to customer orders. We have 10,000 customer orders. Let me go back to the prior screen. 10,000 customer orders. It means every time we have an order, each order costs us $425. For design changes, we allocated 3,040,000 to the cost pool. And we said we're going to have 4,000 design changes. Therefore, every time we process a design change for a customer, we're going to allocate $760 to that design change. Same thing with order size, 5.2 million. And order size is driven by machine hours. So we're going to spend $6.50 per machine hour. And for customer relation, we allocated 3,080,000. We have 2,000 customers. So on average, each customer is costing us one million. $1,540. And notice 6 million is, we could not allocate to anything specifically. That's fine. Those are organization sustaining costs and will be assigned to product or customers. We'll see how it will, it goes. If it's too large, if it's, if it's a small, we just expense them. Just kind of get, get rid of them. So let's take a look now at the, at, at what, how the cost uh, work. Remember material labor and overhead goes directly to the cost object, the product. So it's no, no big deal here. Overhead, remember we have those, we're going to first start with the first allocation. Then the second allocation is find the activity rate. And this is what we did earlier and the other will be un unallocated. This is basically a picture of what we just did. And remember the customer order was 425. The design change was 760 per design change. Um, the machine hours is 650 and the customer it's costing us $1,540 to maintain a customer. Okay. Now let's assign cost to cost object using the second stage allocation using Baxter battery. So this is what Baxter battery looks like. This is what the situation looks like. The sure start, the standard battery require no design resources. So notice we're not going to, they have no design. They don't, they don't get redesigned. So they, they, we allocate none for design. We have 800,000 batteries ordered with 4,000 separate orders. So we have 4,000 orders, 8,000 batteries. Then, the number of unit each sure start require 36 minutes of machine hours which is total time of 480 480,000 because remember we spend machine hours and at times 6.5 long life require new design resources and we're going to find out how much for each customer we produce 400,000 of them notice half of the sure start with 6,000 separate orders 4,000 custom design prepared well we know how many design custom design we have 4,000 of those custom design versus none for the short start and each long life require 48 minutes of machine hours it's a deluxe therefore it requires more time and remember we're going to multiply this by six dollars and fifty cent per machine hours so let's find uh, our overhead cost for each battery using ABC uh, for the uh, which one is this this is for the short start for the short start customer orders we said we have 4,000 customer order and each customer order is 452 therefore we're going to assign 1 million and 1 million eight hundred and eight thousand design changes nothing we don't have any design changes based on the order size we have 480 thousand unit times six dollars and fifty cent per machine hour so total overhead allocated the short start is four million nine hundred and twenty five thousand and uh, for the long life we'll do the same thing notice the long life will have um design changes which is the long life did not 
And what happened? We end up with 9,920,000. That's not assigned to anything, not assigned to anything, okay? Because the batteries don't consume the resources on that level. That's fine. Let's take a look at the next slide. Now let's take a look at a specific customer. Let's take a look at how Baxter Battery System worked for just one of the 2,000 customers. Let's assume Acme Auto Parts, who placed a total of 12 orders. So the orders are 12, 12 orders. Note that four orders are for long life, for the deluxe, and eight orders are for the for the long life, and four and sorry, um, four orders for long life, and obviously eight are for the standard one, sure start. And note that four orders for long life require a design change. So the four orders for the uh, long life require the design change. So each order for the sure start for the regular one, this is for the regular one and four orders for the deluxe one of 50. They want 50 deluxe and 60 regular. Machine hours, obviously, 480 uh, machine hours. 480 short start require, which is because we have eight times 60 equal to 480. So we have 480 units require 288 machine hours. The 200 long life, which is four orders times 50, which is 200, require 160 machine hours. So we're breaking down the machine hours. Let's take a look to see how much things are costing us in terms of overhead, okay? So customer orders, we we have 12 customer orders times 425, that's 5,422. We have four design changes for the deluxe one, okay? We have 488 hours in between the two times 650. And this is one customer, Acme, we multiply 1540 by one. So the total overhead allocated to this customer is 12,916. So this is, this is for one customer specifically. So this is how we find how much it's costing us per customer based on their order, design changes, order size, and customer relation. So now let's take a look at the uh, customer margin, customer margin. So let's, let's take a look at the, the the big picture, then we'll look at Acme as a customer by itself. So the first step in computing the product margin is to gather each product sales and direct cost data. So this is the sales for the short start, 31,300,000. For the long life, 18,700,000. Total sales, as we saw from the beginning, is 50 million. This is how much direct labor, direct material, and shipping cost that's directly allocated to short start. This is how much material, labor, and overhead directly allocated to long life. And this is the total. Sorry, and this is the total. Now we're going to add the overhead. The overhead, how much did we assign to short start? 1,808,000 1, 1, uh, for the customer order and for the design change, 3,120,000. We computed those earlier. For the long life, customer order, we allocated, so this is the overhead. This is ABC cost assignment for the overhead. Okay, this is how much we assign overhead for long life, and this is the total. Now let's take a look at the uh, product margin. It seems what's happening, short start, we're making a profit on short start of 8,372,000 and we are incurring a loss on the long life, 1,132,000. It seems we are making a profit on sh short start and long life is, uh, it's a loss. Now, remember overall the company is incurring a loss because we still have 9,000,000. 240,000, that's unassigned, unassigned, what's uh, unassigned, okay? So therefore we get a loss of 2 million. Why? Because remember, this is 7,240, this is the profit, then we have to subtract the customer relation, we have to subtract other costs that's unassigned, so we have 9,240 unassigned, therefore we end up with a loss of 2 million. But now, what we know is sure start is a profitable product, long life is not a profitable product. So this is what ABC is showing us based on this data, okay? So let's take a look now at Acme specifically, Acme. Acme, the sales for Acme auto parts was 29,200. Let's look at direct material. Direct material was 7,500, direct labor 6,700 and shipping 1,700, which are, those are directly traced to the Acme. For their overhead, remember we computed their overhead was customer order 5,424, product design 3,040, order size and customer relation. Let's see what the product margin is. The product margin or the customer margin is $354. What does this tell us? It tells us we are making a profit on, for, on this customer of $384. We're able to pinpoint how much we are making profit per customer. That's including 
that's including the direct labor and direct material as well as overhead and any direct traceable cost. So that, that's important. It's very important to see this. Now we're going to switch. Now we're going to switch. I'm going to show you what would happen if we're using the traditional cost. What's the traditional cost system? Remember, the traditional cost system it is you would use one overhead uh, allocation rate to allocate the overhead. So let's take a look at, again, at the same data. Sales does not change for each product. Direct material and direct labor does not change, so those are not change. What's going to happen is this now. We're going to we're going to we're going to look at our manufacturing overhead, which are only product cost, not indirect cost, only product cost, only the product cost, production cost, not non non manufacturing, which is fourteen million. And we're going to assume that machine hours is what's driving our overhead. So we're going to have one allocation rate, which is machine hours. So fourteen million of overhead, estimated overhead cost, divided by the driver or the allocation based of eight hundred thousand machine hours. We find our we find that seventeen dollars and fifty cent is our consumption rate of overhead, assuming we are using one one overhead rate. So simply put, Sure Start uses eight hundred thousand hours. Uh, 800,000 times 0.6 per hour to produce it. So we use 480,000 machine hours and long life uses 320,000 machine hours, 320. So now we can find the overhead because we're going to take the machine hours times 1750. The machine hours times 1750, the machine hours times 1750. This is how much we allocate to short start and overhead 8.4 million. And this is how we allocate how much overhead 5.6 million to long life. So this is how the overhead allocated. Very easy. Notice it took us maybe 15, 20 minutes to explain this, uh, to explain ABC for the uh, traditional cost. It took me like a couple minutes. Just take the, find the, uh, find the predetermined overhead rate, take the predetermined overhead rate, multiply it by the activity, which is machine hours. We find the overhead. Now let's take a look at our profitability using the traditional method. Under the traditional method, sure start is only making 6.9 million. And guess what? Long life seems profitable. Notice this is the deluxe. Now it's profitable under the under the traditional method, which was not profitable when we did the ABC method. And this is basically going back to the previous lesson where I told you the simple product, the product that doesn't consume new designs, doesn't consume fancy resources, are subsidizing. So notice here. Sure start should, it, it's more profitable than 6.9 million and long life is, is making a loss but under the traditional method because we're only using machine hours we're assuming they're basically in a sense they are produced the same way which they're not long life require more design okay therefore it should not be it should not be uh, it should not should not be treated as sure start but under the traditional method it's misleading it shows both are profitable then we have to subtract 11 million of you know, administrative costs, we're back to the 2 million. Obviously, it doesn't matter. We're at a loss of 2 million. Okay. So notice here that we are at a, uh, uh, basically, the traditional is misleading. Now, let's take a look at a picture of those. Under the traditional method, short start is making 6.9, long life is making 2.1. And we're going to say, oh, we're doing great. But under ABC, which is if we consider ABC superior, then we have a problem. Short start is making more profit. It's making 1.4 million, 1 million 472,000 more in profit. And long life is incurring a loss. We are off 3.2 million costing the long life. Okay? So the traditional cost over cost the short start. It's showing us it's costing us more for the short start and it's not. And report a lower profit for this product. We're thinking short start is not a good thing. On the contrary, according to ABC, short start is a better product for us. The traditional cost under cost the long life. It's showing us it's not costing us much to produce the long life, which is that's not good because it's showing us a higher profit. Well, indeed, in reality, it's not. So why is there the differences between the two? Let's summarize. There are really three reasons, three reasons why the reported product margin differ between the two. One, ABC costing only assign manufacturing overhead cost consumed by the product. So it only assign those. Traditional costing assign all manufacturing overhead costs. So ABC says, if only the product is consuming the overhead, we allocate the overhead. If it's not consuming the manufacturing overhead, we don't allocate it. Traditional said, no, 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 no. We have to assume all manufacturing overhead. Not, 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 not non-manufacturing, only manufacturing, but all of it. So one more time, let me show you this. We have manufacturing overhead, MOH. ABC says not all of it, some 
and none. So some of it is used not, and some of it not used, not used, depending if it's consuming. This is ABC. Under the traditional method, the old method, I call it the old, all the, tra all the traditional, MOH, all MOH, all is go goes to the product. Under the ABC, some of it goes to the product. That's one difference. Traditional costing allocate all manufacturing overhead using a volume-based allocation. Volume, basically on the volume, the more the, vo the more you produce of it, the more I, 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 I would allocate to you. ABC uses activity, non-volume. So what happened in the traditional method, if, if, if a product is consuming a lot of electricity and we're using electricity, it will appear as if it's costing us more. Although, if we do activity-based costing, maybe other things are costing us more, not, the, not that activity itself. As we just saw in this battery example, where the design, we did not have to design the short start, therefore we, we, we did not allocate any cost to it. So traditional uses volume, ABC uses non-volume, some activity, that's, that's, another, that's another discrepancy. Also, traditional costing disregards selling and administrative because they are period cost. So traditional costs say, I'm not going to be using my selling expenses as part of my cost, product cost. ABC traces shipping to product to include non-manufacturing overhead costs caused by the product and the activity cost pool that are assigned to the product. Simply pull, simply put, selling expenses are, are included. We, do, we, we, are, we are allowed to put selling expenses as long as we can trace it to the product. Under the traditional, that's not included. That's also create a difference between the two. So, so many companies do not use ABC for external reporting. Why? Many reasons. For, for one thing, it doesn't comply with GAAP. Because remember, period cost cannot be a product cost. External reporting are less detailed than internal. So guess what? We're not going to give you how we produce the product. So therefore, ABC is very detailed. It may give you a, a competitive advantage. It may be difficult to make changes to the company's accounting system. ABC is complex. It's very complex. And sometimes you may think this is the activity, then the next year you may change the activity, so it's not easy to just keep changing your, um, your accounting system. And last but not least, auditor may be sus suspect of the sus subjective allocation process based on interviews with employees. Now you have your ABC system, and if you're using it for external reporting purposes, then guess what? The auditor is going to review it. And all hell is going to break loose when the auditor disagree with your judgment about what's consuming your resources. Because remember, it's a judgment. You are, you as a company, determining those activities based on your experience. Now, here comes an auditor that may, may not have enough experience in the industry or may have too much experience, or they may not, uh, they may not know how to allocate the cost, and they're going to question all those subjective allocation that you made for the activities. So it creates a lot of problems. That's why it's, it's used, ABC in a sense, it's used as a supplemental, um, uh, supplemental method to price the product or to cost the product. So there are five limitations of ABC. One, the first one is subst require substantial resources to implement and maintain. So it's costly, and you have to review it on a regular basis. Two, desire to fully allocate co all costs to product. Now, also, some some product may not be allocable. So it, it, it'll, it will try to kind of any cost that we have will try to put it into the product if they can. That's that. There, there's some little bit of bias there. Does not conform with gap. So if you have ABC, you have to have two costing system because you have another one that allocate only product cost. Four, potential misinterpretation of unfamiliar numbers. Now you are, you are, you are introducing new numbers to your employees, new number to management. There could be some misinterpretation. And resistance to unfamiliar numbers and report. You are adding more reports, more numbers, and you are creating more, not red tape, uh, just more, maybe more noise for some people. It's, it may be very beneficial, but for some people, ABC may just be a noise and it's not needed and it's creating more work for us. It could be. I'm not saying it is. I'm just saying this is. there's always resistance for new systems. And this is basically, in a nutshell, an example and a benefit slash uh, disadvantages of ABC. If you have any questions, any comments, by all means, email me or see me in class. If you're studying for your CPA or your CMA exam, study hard. It's worth it. This time.